we're going to see now how to select things from data frames, select, filter, index, etc. given verbs we use to the selection process. Selection, we'll see, will be either by column or columns. We could say, I want to zoom into population. I want to see only population, for example. I only want to see surface area, for example. I want to see both population and surface area. So it's going to be column-based selection. What we're going to do is not that we're shrinking the original data frame, but we'll actually get a copy with only the columns we want to see. And also we're going to do row based selection or row based. In this case, I think it makes a little bit more sense to call it sometimes filtering because we will say something like, I want to select only Canada and friends. I want to select only Italy, etc. And actually we're going to later, we're going to in the, next, in the following lessons, we're going to combine these to conditional selection. So we will be able to now do proper filtering. I want to select all those countries which population is greater than 70 million inhabitants, for example, and surface area is less than something else. So we will be able to, again, to do this conditional filtering, this, this filtering or conditional selection based on multiple columns, right, in the data frame. That's going to be the, the most interesting part. So let's get started. Um, there's a, there are a couple of uh, summaries here. We're going to start with selection by column. Selection by columns is, is very simple. What you're going to find is that the regular object square bracket something in data frames will select by column. So in this case, I get only the columns, the column population. There are actually two ways of performing the selection. One is with square brackets. The other one is with the dot. But that we said with the series, um, and as we're going to talk about uh, in, these, in detail now, this is not recommended because if your column has spaces, for example, uh, surface area, I will not be able to do these to use this syntax. I can use this syntax. This is always possible. It's not possible to use the dot syntax. So again, this dot notation is not recommended. Please get used to use the just regular selection in, uh, in data frame. So again, the regular selection in a data frame will select the given column. We can also do multi selection. So in this case, you're specifying which columns you have. Let's also add here surface area, rerun it. There you go. Um, and we have population, GDP, surface area, you're just adding them. Something that is interesting is that by changing the order of your columns, you're going to reorder your data frames. So in this case, I want to get surface area first, right? I just pass it first. Basically here you're passing a list, which is an ordered sequential data structure. You're passing a list of the columns that you want to select. Please note, I'm going to do the F just in case again, please note two things first. The data frame is not, the original data frame is not modified. It's not your dropping column somehow. You are getting actually a new copy of the data frame. The original data frame is not, has not changed. Something very important too is that when you do selection of just one column, what you get back is a series. This thing is a series. And this is what I told you at the beginning, this um, good interwork between the different data structures that we have in pandas data frame series series data frame so you have a data frame you perform certain operation you get back a series you have a series you perform certain operations you get back a data frame so it's always uh, you're always switching from data frames to series you can see data frame as a more general data structure we can see it in these I have a more general data structure this tabular data structure is a data frame once you select just one column this is going to be a series and actually you can see what we have right here. Once you have a column, right, that it's a series, you can always turn it back again to a data frame, a very small data frame, just one column data frame, but you can again go back and forth between series and data frames. So this was column selection. Let's, let's see now how to do um, row based selection. At the beginning, what we're gonna do is we're gonna select by the index. So for example, we're gonna say, I wanna select friends, period or you want to select uh, Canada and Germany. To do that, we're going to use the lock method. And these, uh, remember, was when we introduced them when we were talking about series. 
it's gonna be really important you're gonna notice that sometimes with data frames you might not need to use lock but that is not recommended once you are in the terrain of data frames you must always use lock and i lock because it's gonna be that way of preventing ambiguity and errors later so once i have my data frame i can select a given element of an index by just doing dot lock on the index as simple as it gets i want to select friends what's the population of friends 63.95 million inhabitants what's the surface area of friends 64 something what's the hdi of friends it's 0 0.888 what continent it's Europe so again it's just dot lock on that given index that you want to select also note here when you select this row what you get back is a series so it's like I get a uh, France this row right is transposed and it's modified and we get back a series so we go from a horizontal uh, like way of representing friends to a vertical way of representing friends the columns now become part of the index of the series so for example here once i have this thing what i could do is select again by population so this thing is just a series what i can do is by population there you go so i have just zoom in into just these one volume Okay, so you go from uh, data frame dot lock gives you a series. We can actually uh, change that. We can also use the transpose method. We can transpose it back and forth. So you see that this thing is a series. This is basically what we're receiving. And if we transpose it back, this is the original one. So dot lock with data frames works in the same way as with series. The lock part can either be just one element. It can be a range of multiple elements to do um, slicing. Of course, you need to follow the same order. Or it can be a list of multiple indices to select. I want to select France and Italy and Germany, whatever. Um, once, what you're going to note is that this lock method in a more general way, we have it summarized uh, here at the beginning actually with uh, multiple keys what you're gonna find is that a data frame has is a two-dimensional data structure right so we could say uh, the first dimension is row based this is zero row based the second uh, dimension is column based it's a tabular two-dimensional data structure so here lock what it's gonna sac accept is the filtering for dimension one and then followed by the filtering of dimension two to be honest to be completely honest, a data frame can have multiple dimensions, more than two dimensions. We are going to see uh, multi-dimensional hierarchical data frames later. So what that means is that once you reach these multi-dimensional ones, you will start uh, chaining, if you want, dimensions in the log. Right now, as we have a regular, let's actually do df.ndim, a regular uh, one dim uh, two-dimensional sorry data frame we are just going to focus on the selection so first dimension selects by row the first selection of a data frame is the first dimension sorry of a data frame is the row the second dimension of a data frame is going to be column so you can squeeze pretty much the selection of both by row and by column all in the same expression with block the separation is in the comma so right there we see that we get from France up to Italy, France, Germany, Italy on the row based and the column is only population. So seeing it right here, we're doing uh, France, Italy and Germany, but only population. Just these, these tiny chunk right there. Um, we can actually select multiple columns. So we're doing friends up to Italy, friends, Germany and Italy, and it's going to be both population and GDP. So looking at it right here, we have a uh, population GDP uh, friends, German, for friends, Germany and Italy. So again, the first element in lock is the row based element. The second element of the row is the column based element. You can actually see that the actual operation we performed late before just selection by column was kind of uh, select all the elements only from population of course that this is the, the 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 recommended way of doing it 
But again, you can now see a little bit how smart uh, Pandas is by doing this selection. It's actually running a uh, lock selection with all the rows, but only the column population in this case. And finally, also something that you know already, it's gonna work in the same way as with Pandas series, is that as a data frame is also a sequential ordered collection, Canada is before France, France is before Germany, Italy is after Germany, there is a sequential, there is a norther, right, in a data frame, we will be able to select by sequential position. So I wanna get the information about the first country. I don't know which country it is. Which country is the first one? Maybe you don't know it. If you know it, you can just do df.log Canada. Canada, right there, right? But as we do not know it, we can say, actually give me the first country. I don't know which one it is. So df.ilog, i selection, sequential position, i log zero. What you see right here is that the result will be a series, as we saw, we go from horizontal to vertical. The name of the series is the name of the index. So now you know what's that country. If you didn't know which country was the first one, we know it by the name of the series. I can do here, let me copy and paste it. I can do just dot name here and we get what was that given country. We know what country it is without uh, uh, now that we know the position. Um, so again, all the positions works in the same way. Give me the, the, the last country with negative position. Give me a, uh, you can pass a couple of different elements, zero, one, minus one, first, second, last country. And again, also a range works with iLock. So far, there's nothing new here compared to a uh, series. What is new is that iLock also supports this first dimension row, second dimension column using indices. So maybe you don't know which column you, you're referring to, but you know the position. You can do that with iLock. So give me from France, let me actually, uh, the F, let me show you this again. From um, f starting on France up to Italy, uh, Germany, actually Italy is not included, up to Germany, I want to select all the elements in the position on the column position 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, that's HDI. So from France to Germany, 0 0.88, 0 0.91, this is what we have right here. Please also note that the name of the series is the name of the column that we had. And one final, uh, not final, but right here, as, as we have the chance, I want you to please take a second look at the slicing or selection or range selection in both lock and I lock because the behavior is gonna be different. We mentioned it with series, but let's talk about it very quickly again. When you do a selection process uh, or a range process in, um, in data frames, the same thing happens with series, but in a lock operation, selecting by index, you say, I wanna go from France to Italy, Italy is included, right? So right here, Italy is indeed included. You go from France up to Italy, so the upper limit, the rightmost limit is included. Italy is right here. If you do this with iLock, that behaviors change. So let me go back again to what we were right here. If you say, I wanna select from one to three, let me show you the data frame again. This is zero, one, two, three. Italy is in country number three, in position three, but Italy is not included. So with iLock, the rightmost position, the, 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 the right side of the selection is not included compared to lock, which is included. So this is similar to the regular Python's behavior with lists and, and other data structures and selection and indexing. Finally, now to wrap it up, the Boolean selection we saw on series also works with data frames. So in this case, we can pass uh, with the lock method, we can say, actually, these are the countries that I wanna either uh, pick or get or reject with false. So true to select, false to reject, we can just run this line. And again, we're receiving pretty much uh, France, Germany, and Italy. It's right there, the answer that we are 
uh, having. Um, you can do this these, um, Boolean selection for both rows and columns. Given your columns, you can say false, false, true, surface area, HDI, true, false for continent. That's what we have right here. And that's the final result. So Boolean selection is just about passing a list or an array of Boolean elements pointing again true for those elements you want to keep, false for those elements that you want to reject. This is the same thing we did with series and I think you can imagine that we're going to use these for conditional selection or filtering in our following lesson.